Watching back on old videos today makes me remember and smile at the zeal I had to be a filmmaker. Honestly, even with my amateur software, I was making films and shooting things and documenting everything. Where did that spark go? What did I allow to take that spark away from me or to stop growing as an artist? I don't know. All I know is that I want to get back to that. To get back to making things and pursuing my passions and preserving myself in my state of mind. No one and nothing else deserves that position of priority in my life any more than that. The past few months have seen a changed world. A worldwide pandemic, protests across the globe, people's movements and environmental and human crises. What does this do for creative expression? Shore presents Creatives in Conversation. Hi, I'm Ananya. I am Ahana. And we are your hosts. Join us as we speak to creatives worldwide, hear about their journey, and become aware of how they're coping during this unprecedented time. Bringing the art of conversation back in the age of social distancing. Our guest for today is Nana Amma. Nana is a British Ghanaian creative who takes photos, makes films, and emphasizes the fluid notion of creativity. In our second episode, We speak with Nana about her experiences, what she's been doing in this unprecedented era, and her notions of creativity and plans for the future. Hi, Nana. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode. And thank you for being here. We're really looking forward to talking to you. Thank you for having me. Honestly, I feel very (laughs) honoured. And the imposter syndrome within me is like, why are they interviewing me? But I'm excited (laughs) to just have a conversation. Yeah. Okay, so let's start off quickly with a little introduction uh, where you tell us a little about you, where you're from and your journey with the arts. Yeah, so um, I'm 23 years old. I'm currently in London and um, I just graduated this summer in economics and Spanish from the University of St. Andrews. And I was studying there for the last four years and had an amazing experience there. Um and it's funny because I studied econ and Spanish, but in all my spare time, I was, you know, doing photography, taking pictures at events, um, kind of really coming into my more creative side. And since graduating, I've just been trying to really focus on that side of me as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if I answered all of that, but that's where I'm at right now. Just trying to, um, yeah, work on more creative side, look for more creative roles. <laughs> Um, in employment and yeah that's me that's really nice to hear and especially like l- hearing about how you've recent you're recently coming in to focus on your creative work a little more and you know and professionally and so we want to ask you what art and creativity mean to you and um, specifically how you've developed your creative side over the past few years Cool. Um, I'd say I've always been, I mean, this is classic, everyone will say, I've always been creative, but I have always been creative. I've always enjoyed um, drawing and painting and taking pictures especially. So I'd say like my main medium is photography, kind of that was the thing that's probably been the most consistent the last few years. And um, actually my parents bought me my first um actually a bit before that, when I was in uh, elementary school, primary school, um, I my mum used to get me these little disposable cameras from Boots and she was like, here, take your pictures and I'll develop them later. And I used to get really excited by that. That's basically what I used for, um, I was probably one of my first kind of camera experiences. And throughout high school, I then was still using disposables. And I remember being really kind of embarrassed to have them because everyone else had these cool little digital point and shoots and um, big cameras. But I was always still just using this little disposable camera, taking them to boots, developing. Um, And then my parents bought me a DSLR camera just before my GCSEs actually as a a kind of present slash kind of you know you need to work hard to make this worth it 
Um, and for the first few years I had that, I was always too scared to use it because it was quite big and chunky and I felt like, you know, if I'm going to take this out, people are going to mug me or, or even like people are going to know I'm a tourist, so I can't use this. And, and that definitely influenced my creative practice because I was too careful with it. And then um, when I went to uni, I took it up with me and that's really when it kind of took off where I started to be like, you know what, I have a camera for a reason. I should use it. It shouldn't be collecting dust in its bag. And I started taking out more. Um, I made some really cool creative friends in St Andrews I happened to live on a corridor with some very creative um and budding photographers and and makers and we all would just kind of get together and either have like art sessions or like walk around town with our cameras and get involved with at the time there was a photography society and other little bits and bobs and um so yeah so again a long-winded way to answer what does creativity mean to me I think it's just um it's a needed uh, outlet for me. I think some people find that for them it's running or it's, I don't know, doing any particular type of exercise or, or cooking or whatever. Everyone has their different outlet that allows them to kind of blow off steam and, and feel more themselves. And for me, I think that's through art and through um, particularly photography and filming and and drawing I feel very much more myself when I get to do those things um so yeah I'd say that's what creativity means to me yeah th thank you for that I find it also quite interesting that you brought up the disposable cameras because I, I do find that it's a bit of an irony because now people are more attracted suddenly to film and to the disposable medium so that was just something very interested because uh, interesting because obviously now it's the thing now it's quite in and everyone wants to shoot on film i have to keep i have to stop myself from getting into the pattern of being like i was here first i did this but sometimes i do feel like that because i'm like the same people who i was you know jealous of and they all had these big cameras whilst i was you know collecting and archiving my life through disposables they now have gone back to the film and people come to me and ask like nana what would you recommend for this film and i'm like hmm <laughs> But that's that's just the way it goes, I guess. And, and it makes sense that people are trying to go back to film because it is a lot more of an intentional um, practice within photography. You know, you can't be as snap happy as you are with digital photos. You have to really think about the shot and the lighting and depending on how technical your camera is, um, you know, understanding the aperture and, and changing the shutter speed, all those things. Um, so it's a lot more involved. I understand why more people are into it now, but it is just quite, um, it's quite funny because I, I used to be really embarrassed and now it's like, oh my God, do you have one of those? It's so cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's, I know Ahana shot, uh, like some footage on a film video camera. Yeah, it was such a cool experience. I think I, I really want to do it. It's just that it's, it's expensive and, um, it's but it's it's such a good experience just to have it on film. I love like the texture and the aesthetic like feel of it. Although I was doing film video, not like film, you know, photography. But yeah, that that's really cool. And um, I think you were also speaking about like, I think you were you told me about a conversation you had with Nana about not like putting creatives in boxes and so sort of speaking about how you know Nana's. I spoke about like film and photography and drawing as media as that she sort of you know uses so yeah like what sort of inspired you to say that can you tell us a little more about just you know your the different media the different media media you use um yeah that's that's something I've been not struggling with but really thinking about in the last few years when I think about how I define myself as a creative and and for a long time and still sometimes I have a kind of imposter syndrome where I'm like oh, I'm not really a photographer because I don't live and breathe photography and I don't have the latest kit and I'm not like super in the know about different you know but then I think why why am I holding myself to that standard like I take pictures I can call myself a photographer I film things I can call myself a filmmaker I think sometimes we set too many kind of bars which are often 
you know, set by institutions which are inherently exclusive and they say, you know, you can't, you can't be this because you didn't study at this film school, you can't be that because you did this. It's fine, like, the people who are just learning and have a raw talent for it without having necessarily formally studied it. So a lot of, yeah, the last few years has been me trying to reclaim these terms for myself and say, well, I make films so I can be a filmmaker. And, and, and then also within that, not trying to box myself in too much to any one of these things because I do do a bit of everything. Um, I do take pictures, I do film things, I do draw, I do collage, I do crochet and knit. And that's not me trying to say, oh my God, I do all these things. There's a lot of people do all these things, but I'm trying to say it in a way that, um, yeah, like it's okay to explore different mediums um, to tell different stories. Sometimes like I might think of a project and think, oh, this would be really good as a photography series, or this might be really good as a film. And, um, and even lately I've been thinking a lot about uh, like dance and people who dance and I don't really dance but I want to I'm trying to make a project about um, using animation to capture dancing and rhythm and that's something that I don't quite do at the moment but I'm learning and trying to teach myself animation so again like I, I was speaking to a friend um, someone who I, I work on for this magazine um, called A2O her name's Ethel and she's this artist um, and she's also again we both had this kind of discussion about mixed media and how, you know, the essence of art and creativity is about being open and expressing yourself in in whatever medium comes to you. Like, why are we now trying to box creatives and artists into one thing? It's the, it should be the main space where there is no box, there is no right and wrong. If you're doing things and you, you're, you identify as such, then you should be able to... Um, create uh, it's a bit wishy-washy but um that's that's how I feel at the moment yeah no I completely agree because um I also feel like when you are creatively inclined if that's a term which I can use it's like every aspect of your life you that's the way you think so when you look at something you do get inclined to think about it in a specific way which pertains to creativity and sometimes putting yourself in boxes is very difficult like I also struggle with this like defining factor like oh what do you do are you, are you do you like to write would you call yourself a writer a photographer and I'm like oh my god I have to give it a name now so I think that's definitely something which a lot of people struggle with I also feel like specifically young people this could be completely wrong a misconception but I personally feel like young people like in our generation I can't believe I use that term but in our generation it's something we do struggle with a lot because like the possibilities of a professional career in creative fields is just there's so many things you can do so yeah definitely completely agree with that um in terms of so you were talking a bit about a magazine which you've been working with but um i know you also are involved in lots of different projects i even remember when you were at St. Andrews, you were involved in lots of different things. Maybe do you want to talk to us a little more specifically about some of the work you've been doing or done in the past? Okay. Um, yeah, so in the past, I think my probably the biggest project I did was when I was the lead photographer for an exhibition called Platts, Princesses and Pink Moisturizers. Um, so a friend, Krantima, uh, and Yuma do she shout out to Krantima. <laughs> I don't know if she will listen to this, but I'll send it to her anyway. Um, but she's a you know cultural, uh, creative producer based in London, and she reached out to me and said, "Nana, I'd love for you to photograph for this exhibition that I have planned." And I remember at the time, so this was in twenty eighteen. I remember at the time thinking, like, I am not qualified for this like I I take pictures small small like I don't I can't be doing you know an exhibition like that but I'm really glad I did and um because that really was a very reaffirming moment for me um in terms of kind of so the project involved us going around meeting several people who were based in this borough in in East London and asking them questions about um so several black women and uh non-binary black people um and asking them uh kind of their experiences and their relationship with their hair and and how it 
informs their sense of identity. And I got to meet some really cool people. So Crantum, I was doing the kind of interview part, but I was always present for it. And then that informed the way we took the photos. And um, for me, it was it was really, yeah, a really special moment and probably the turning point in when I started to actually say, OK, I do photography. I am a photographer. This is a, an aspect of me that I want to lean into. And the project did really well. It ended up being reviewed by Vice and it then was uh, picked up and put in the Migration Museum in London. And since then, the kind of, the project has really grown. And there's now a platform called Black Hair Stories, which Krantima runs. And a lot of my photos from the original exhibition are part of it. And she also did a later um, event. So it keeps, it's like, it's grown. And I recently spoke to her. I recently interviewed her, actually, for the magazine I'm writing for. And she, you know, she never expected it to snowball and grow into the way it has and me neither I never I didn't even know like that my photos could be where they ended up being and um yeah so that's the last that was a big project I did um and then at St Andrews I took pictures for different events event photography is um an interesting one again it was something I'd never really done before when people first reached out to me and said you know I've taken pictures at family events like and that's usually an auntie being like no no come come take a picture of me like it's not ever you know artistically planned it's just like they need a picture they want to know what's that picture I have my camera that's it um but yeah the event photography was quite interesting I don't know if you um both have ever tried event photography before but it was another way of kind of um very a very big sensory experience because you know you're in a crowd of people it's usually super busy people aren't always conscious that you're there as a photographer um and then there's music and and people are like hey can I have a picture and and you're trying to capture the night and and then also have a good time so that was an interesting um thing to have done and and then I think some of my work has been featured in like on the rocks festival so it's St Andrews space festival and and I worked with stereoscope magazine as well um and that was really fun working kind of curating photography and and through that as well I ended up doing a little docu-series which interviewed um again I just I I all I had to do was just organize the Instagram and Facebook but I didn't even do that I was like I'm gonna make a film series so I started um I you know sat down with um, people around town who I knew to be creative I didn't get to get round to you um, to interview you because of course COVID but um, yeah it was really fun because it meant that you know I was helping facilitate these interviews and then I was filming them and I was editing them and I was getting to understand people's craft so sorry this is so long-winded this takes me back to now which is now what I'm doing is just kind of freelancing writing for this magazine which is A2O so it's a an arts and culture magazine focused on uh, platforming the stories and movements of um, Africans and um, those of the diaspora. So it's really interesting and I've gotten to meet some really cool people again through it. Um, but yeah, so right now I'm, I'm just, anytime an, an opportunity comes my way, I'm kind of looking and thinking like, does this work for me? Does this serve me? Like, can it work? Can I do this? And and also putting myself out there a bit more as well. So so what you're doing currently is writing for the magazine and documenting yeah. stories. And is there anything else you're working on that you'd like to share with us or any project that we can, you know, sort of that we should look forward to? And yeah. Yeah. So currently, yeah, so I'm working, writing for this magazine. Um, sometimes I get asked to write other things for other magazines. Like I recently wrote for Sleek magazine, which is a Berlin based, um, again, arts and culture magazine. Um, and I, as I said as well, like I'm trying to learn animation. So hopefully a little small animation series might come. So I'm actually, I've learned this, um, I'm trying to learn rotoscoping. I don't know if you are familiar with that, um, which is basically, it's, I mean, that's how a lot of, you know, when you watch a movie and um, it's like really human like the movements. So the reason that is, is because of rotoscoping. So often they would have had 
people real people act out the scenes and then animators go in and draw every single thing frame by frame so i'm basically looking back at old footage i have that i really liked and going back and drawing frame by frame over it so that's something i'm trying to develop and learn because within like the short films and montage videos that i like to make um i really want to include an aspect of animation and then I guess another project which in the last week I've been thinking about a lot is um, actual like genuine storytelling. So when I was growing up, my parents, um, so I'm Ghanaian, and my parents used to tell me Anansi stories. I don't know if you're familiar with Anansi the spider. He's basically um, this kind of folkloric character, trickster, who is the kind of the protagonist and antagonist in a lot of stories um, that my parents used to tell me growing up and I want to make a little series about some of those stories and um, perhaps get my family involved as well and tell them in the original languages um, so they were often told in tree to me and this also eclipses a time where I'm trying to relearn tree as well um, I've started like a, a little tree club, which is basically, I reached out to some young Ghanaians that I know and also don't know. And there's a little group of us and we're just every Saturday meeting and talking and learning. Um, so that's another thing I'm doing as well, just like um, doing little bits and bobs whilst I'm still applying for things. That sounds really interesting. And like based on what we've spoken about, I think there's, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a huge emphasis on identity in a lot of your work. That's what I see as a recurring theme. I also watched, I think, a short film which you did, which was on your website. I actually, yeah, I just set up my website. I finally got around to it. Um, I think, again, another moment for me, because like, up until now, I've just been using my Instagram, which is fine. Mm. I think Ananya also just like worked on her website this summer. So that's cool. It's like COVID is a good time to sort of get like a lot of this stuff done. Because it's not actually long. Do you know what? I'm not going to lie. It was a long process getting my website up just because I didn't really know. I'd never really sat down with all my work before in one space and been like, what stuff do I want to highlight? If someone only has 30 seconds, what do I want them to see of my stuff? So it was, yeah, trying to curate work for me I've curated work for other people but not really for myself like who am I like what does Nana want to say to the world so that was the moment and then that video intersections which you saw was um the end product of this uh, program I did um last summer called the night school and mm -hmm. it was like a creative mentorship scheme again another re really reaffirming moment because I'd never um really known how to define or how to yeah to find myself as a creative and that's when I even learned the term creative they they really a big takeaway I took from that was that um it doesn't really matter what medium I use like as long as I'm making things and doing things I can be whatever I want to be and they connected me with some amazing people and I've gotten to be on set with um Joe Connor who's my mentor he's a director and music musician and, and producer he does so many things but I was on set with him for Biffy Clyro's um, latest um, music video so I've just I've been able to from that program do lots of things but that pro that project that video was um, something I had to make for the grad show and it's just yeah an exploration of um, of my identity of me not feeling like I the classic kind of you know I'm you know I'm British but I'm also Ghanaian I'm a woman but I'm also a woman of colour and these are important lenses and and intersections that you need to that I need to take into account and and they inform the way I see the world and and they're unique to me but they're also universal we all have different things where there's intersections and overlaps where we don't feel quite 100% one thing or 100% another but they're still big parts of our identity so yeah I'd say a lot of my work is um uh involves like identity uh identity politics um the process of um documenting and um yeah archiving memory all the things all the good things <laughs> so going off of that i think we also want to ask you a little bit about 
the pandemic and how it's shaped your art and art making not just like not just politically but also just in terms of you know you've just graduated and you're like right now you're in a place where you're looking for and looking to transition to a more professional like creative um uh, career i guess and so just talking about these themes and how they've impacted you specifically during or impacted your work rather during this time um yeah i'd say um lockdown has been a bit difficult uh creating wise i think initially i thought oh my god great i finally have all this time to create and to sort out my stuff and you know do all these projects but i kind of had to reel it back in because at the beginning of lockdown i was still so the initial lockdown back in march i was still studying so actually i thought you know i have all this free time but actually i didn't i still had to finish my degree i still had other things and there was so much going around me that i going on around me that i didn't even actually have the capacity to create and i didn't have the inspiration i was very anxious um and that is something that even though creativity is often something that makes me feel better I wasn't even at that point. So it took a while like I really didn't take many photos in lockdown. Um I really didn't create as much as I maybe would have planned to. And then when things started opening up a bit more and I was able to see friends like I I got that energy back again. I started um taking more pictures and creating a bit more and and when I I went back up to St Andrews to pack up my flat and being back in that space as well was very like triggering in a good way to um create and and had a couple of sessions of painting and stuff and then now I'm back here and I'm I'm finished studies and I'm back home I'm back in trying to like make things again but I'm also uh, and especially now we're entering another lockdown I'm also trying not to put too much pressure on myself to create I think there's definitely been a big pressure of like okay you have this space you must create something if you haven't created something then you've wasted your lockdown and it's not, it shouldn't be like that you know it's like it's okay to take this time to heal and and process everything that's going on you don't always have to react i think another thing as you you're talking about polit like using art and um, politically i think there's a lot of i mean a lot of a lot of a lot of things have happened this summer and this year a lot of things are always happening but i think it's been magnified especially with the use of social media and that's something else i've also been kind of struggling with of understanding um to how to show my support for different movements but in a way that isn't performative and in a way that isn't virtue signaling and and also understanding like not everything has to be out in public you can still be doing a lot of stuff and not you know putting on the ground hey i signed this petition or hey i did this of course like sharing things is important but in a way that is genuinely doing something um so yeah that's what i'd say what about what about you guys how have you been finding kind of lockdown and and using your art and creating and and navigating that um i don't know i think for me i do identify with what you're saying so i went home i was in india for 6 months and i was not expecting to be home that long but then once it sunk in that i'm not going back anytime soon i realized that and i do agree with that pressure that was there to create and to write and to do things and um yes i like i did i did do some work i did some writing i got my website done did some photos but still i agree that there was a lot of pressure to like use your and also like pressure to do things instantly so when you talk about like responding to politics and political events that or or just things that took place it was also like pressure to create something or like a piece of writing or work immediately in response to in response to things that were happening around and i also tried to find that balance between social media how i can use it effectively and how like i do feel like some work you make is like instant like you know you have this stimulation and you create something but then there's also a process like a long term process you do like to take with some work i also have come to like the understanding that it's okay like i don't have to constantly keep creating if i don't want to in that moment but i think it was still it was still a good balance over the summer i i never feel like you will never feel like you've created enough or you've made use of your time because i just don't think that happens but yeah i think very similar i think it it has been interesting it has 
it has been a process just a little bit on i guess the question of the future because that's something that no one really knows about but you know a little more nana on maybe where you see yourself or your art or something about what what you hope for yourself and your work in the future this could be the next few weeks the next few months or years whatever you want to talk about i think that question is always daunting but you know it's weird i've been thinking a lot about time lately and understanding time and processing time and and how in light of how much was disrupted this year in terms of for example i was looking forward to graduation or i was looking forward to what all these like you know little not little but big things and using those as kind of um uh things to work towards and now that i know and i've seen that things can be disrupted and just taken away from you i'm trying to really take things like one day at a time one week at a time um and then also like like the other end of it looking like way way far in the future so i'm not really thinking about an in between it's weird i'm thinking about in the now and then also way in the future whenever corona is is um safe or safer or more manageable so for the now i'm just um keeping busy as i said doing making my own little personal projects um i liked what you said also ahana about um just like using this time to create ideas i spoke to a friend the other day and she said nana like you've just been using this time to ideate i've been ideating a lot been thinking a lot about what i'm gonna do in future and um where the kind of things I'm interested in might take me. So actually, I also forgot to mention two other things I'm doing right now. I'm uh, doing a film production, film programming course with the Barbican. Um, so it's basically a weekly meeting until March um, where I meet with other young people across the country in the UK and we are discussing different film festivals, watching loads of films, and my homework is to watch films all the time, it's amazing, and and discussing like um, uh, why they would program for certain film festivals, what stories are they trying to tell, how would they we group them together, who produced them, who directed them, understanding the kind of journey of the film. And this is something that, you know, prior to lockdown or even just last year, like I wouldn't have even known was a job or a role and it's something I'm really interested in that's I'm sorry I hate to interrupt you but I just wanted to ask you a little more about that just like you know sort of analyzing films that go into film festivals because I don't know I was like I studied film for two years and you know I'm sort of looking to transfer now but I was just thinking about how like I'm so picky about like the films I watch and I think as somebody who's also looking to sort of who has made films and by the way I really like the way you edit and sort of use collage in your films and stuff I think that's really cool but anyway as somebody also working in film I just want to ask you a little more about you know just your process when it comes to film viewing and analyzing films yeah so um this program has been really good because it's opened my eyes to the breadth of like so many different film genres and ways of making and ways of seeing the world and telling stories um I do think I'm quite a picky not necessarily picky I think I do have things that I like but this has been really good because I've met with a lot of people and they're showing me films that I'm like oh my god I wouldn't have necessarily picked this but I love it and 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 then when we get to talk we discuss why we like things or why we didn't like things and um I think what I'm really learning is that the more that you watch and the more that you see, the more that you develop tastes and appreciations for certain things and, and certain processes. So I think and then how that feeds into my own work in films that I've made and short films I've made, I mean, haven't made that much, but of what I have made, a lot of it has been kind of externally um, influenced. Like it's things that I've picked up and galleries that I've been to and images and things that I've seen and I'm like oh my god and I write them down straight away in those moments and maybe years later I'll come back to them um so that's like why I was saying a lot of the stuff I um themes I like to talk about or cover in my work is kind of documenting and archiving and memory because uh, I'm someone who very much kind of um 
person likes to look back. I look back at things. I've been journaling for the last 15 odd years. I look back a lot at, at things I've written and intersections. The film I made was um, born out of like all that hoarding and all of the things that I'd collected and collaging all of that together. So, so yeah, I'd say I'm keeping, this program is keeping my eyes open to things in a way that I need to. And that's how I, I process. I take things a lot from both inside, but outside as well. And then the second program or course I'm doing is a short course, um, photography course at, um, that's being facilitated by the Photographies Gallery and it's called um, Art in the Age of Black Girl Magic and it's amazing. We literally spend like a couple of hours each week discussing different really influential black women, female artists um, and non-binary um, black people who have... Uh, created art in the last however long and it's amazing we're, we're kind of discussing um like artistic institutions and galleries and talking about representation within them and and analyzing different works so that's a really good thing as well to keep me busy this is all to say what i'm doing right now and where i'm going in the future wow i why this is another thing i need to work on i actually don't know how to just I don't know how to just get it all into one, like, phrase. Someone asked me about something and I'll say, oh, when I was seven, this thing happened to me. So now <laughs> I tell my whole life story. That's all to say that right now I'm just keeping myself open and, and, you know, every time I see a, you know, short course or something online that will allow me to learn um, a new skill or learn a new way of thinking, I'm very much open to it. And um, I'm actually about to start temping at my old high school right now because of all the places that are accepting more people to work. It's schools. So schools is where I'm going to be a few days a week doing that and still applying and hoping for the new year that more opportunities um, will become available um, in production and creating. Um, so, yeah. That's... So, yeah. Can you also sort of speak a little bit more about the jobs or are you jobs or like programs you're applying to yeah so um job wise i um this summer well the program i did last summer at the end of it they said nana we think production might be a good avenue for you to look at so within kind of could be film production music production but anything that's kind of involving behind the scenes creating they thought that that might be a good space for me and i hadn't really no, known or thought about production before as a profession uh, admittedly and so this last year has been me kind of understanding that and understanding the breadth of roles available and um, yeah so a lot of I was applying this summer for a lot of production internships um, and I had some cool interviews I had an interview with Sony I had an interview with ITV at one point and I didn't get the roles but it was really again reaffirming to even get to the interview room because they've been really competitive um and i'm still um yeah still applying for things i've got a couple of contacts who are and mentors who are really trying to help me out but right now it's really difficult to um accommodate for interns and people coming in which i understand so yeah i'm just realizing and recognizing i also had wanted to move to berlin as well it was not a plan to just um and I actually did go out there for a few weeks to um, just see the scene out there. There's a really big film production um, scene in Berlin and just in general creative space. And I really felt like that's the place I want to be. But of course, with Corona, I realised it's not the right time to be making that move, even if it was just for a few months. And uh, I just need to be back home, save a bit of money and hopefully in next year uh, I can have that time to go because that Berlin for me was just being able to go and be in a really creative space and just have saved up a bunch and be like right I'm here to just create and learn from people so um yeah that's that's the future plan so yeah production and ultimate ultimate goal I think right now don't quote me because I might change my mind would be to somehow become kind of a self-shooting director, working with documentaries, you know, using, being able to use languages, I speak different languages, being able to film things because I like filming, being able to tell, tell stories, I like telling stories, just all of that in one would be great. <laughs>
that just sounds really lovely and um, I think what you said about you not condensing all the information into one sentence is completely fine because I think that's what makes you an ideal candidate for our podcast because we we like the stories we like digressions we like talking about everything and where they've come from and we just really want to thank you for being on the show and quickly before before we end and wrap things up do you have any advice you want to give to young creatives when it comes to taking inspiration at this time or like anything you'd want to tell like young people who are currently defining themselves as creative or not just defining themselves as creatives but for for this unprecedented strange time gosh i feel like i yeah i'm a young creative myself i need the advice um what i'd say actually someone who i met on this um program with the barbican told me this that her mentor had told her this um that oh i'm gonna i'm not gonna do it justice it was something about you know think about where you want to be think about like what creative role or whatever role you might want to get to um and think about where you are now and as the sooner you start making things the sooner you start kind of bridging that gap between where you are now and where you need to be like anything any step that you take whether it be through okay i'm gonna start journaling uh inspirations that i see or i'm gonna start um learning to do animation or i'm gonna start talking to more creative people anything that is taking you that step closer to where you want to be is good because you're closing that gap. So I'd just say, yeah, close the gap or try to close the gap for yourself through things that you can do or through reaching out to other people to get to where you you need to be. And of course, that milestone changes as we grow and as we understand better what we want to do. But it's okay to it's okay for that to change, um, and it's okay for that to keep moving. But just understand where you want to be. And, and work in that direction. And then I'd also say, having said that about creating, also know when it's okay to rest and give yourself a time out. If, if you know, you're having, you're in a funk or um, having to focus on personal things and, and the creative, creative energy isn't coming to you, like that's okay. It doesn't mean you're gonna, suddenly people are, you know, you're not gonna be a photographer anymore because you haven't taken pictures in a while. Like it's okay. Um, these are really strange times and and it's not always possible to create even though that's a very cathartic process it's not always possible so just being gentle with yourself and allowing yourself that space and knowing that it will come back to you um and yeah just just taking things one day at a time <laughs> that's, that's what I'd say that's a really great thought to leave all our listeners with hopefully we have lots of listeners but that's 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 a lovely thought also something I would personally dwell on a lot um, thank you so much for coming on and speaking with us and um, I don't know Hannah if you had any last questions or anything you wanted to say I think your philosophy about you know just uh, aligning yourself with what you want to create and just resting and also sort of ideating and just that is something that the three of us like could also some sort of like apply to ourselves and also um the listeners can also apply to themselves so thank you so much for being with us thank you guys honestly thank you for having me it's so lovely to meet you both and and speak and share these ideas and i'm really excited to see where Shaw goes and and how it grows and I think you're right this is um, despite how really difficult this period has been for so many people it's also beautiful to see what spaces are being created um, out of it like the fact that we can all chat despite being in different places and um, and have these discussions which is great so thank you so much for having me it's been an honor a creative who doesn't like to put herself in a box Nana shares her journey with us. We learn about the media she uses, her creation process, her education at St. Andrews, and her search for work during this pandemic. Intersections, particularly those stemming from Nana's identity, inform her work in a myriad profound ways. This pandemic has been challenging for creatives. So we'd especially like to thank our guests and collaborators for sharing their stories with us during this time. 
Thank you for listening to an episode of Creatives in Conversation and being a part of our community. Join us every week for new episodes and follow us on Instagram for more artsy content and inspiration at Shore Series. That's S H O R.